Hello, you participated in a plenary session at the Justice Summit right now that discussed a very important issue, neuro rights. What for you is the key message of the session? Yes, thanks. Yeah, we discussed neuroscience and, neuro, uh, and neurotechnology and how, uh, how it is important to frame a new discussion around neural rights of everyone for societies and, and, and you know, reflecting the diversity of people uh, living on this, on this planet. Um, for me, uh, an important take-home message was that the role of Jester was really appreciated already now, after uh, being only shortly in existence, by making possible such discussions, in-depth discussions, so that society issues, diplomacy issues, policy issues, neuroscience issues, engineering issues, people with expertise on these different domains which do not exist in the same person, meet around a table and start discussing because some of these, I think Jörg Glauber said it, some of these discussions are maybe too early to already make with lawmakers or at, at the political, national or international level. But JESTA is exactly that forum, that's what I take as my personal message, to could have this discussion today in-depth discussions and then plan and, and, and evaluate risks and opportunities in, in the future related to neural rights. And many people don't actually know or cannot explain more what neural rights are, right? Exactly, yeah. So uh, uh, you mentioned during the session the benefits of neurotechnology to deal with diseases mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Parkinson or Alzheimer. Uh, Olaf, let me throw you a question that you raised during the session, the JESDA session. Uh, should we restore memories? Uh, who will benefit from this very expensive technologies? And again, how JESDA can bring this uh, mm -hmm. debate to the forefront? I, yes, I, 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 I choose the example memory in particular because I think it is reflecting how deeply neurotechnology and neuroscience is related to the issue of neural rights. Memory and memories of your life and of my life, they're forming who we are. They're very important. They're one aspect. There are many other aspects, but memory are a fundamental aspect who we are. And should this be changed, restored, in a medical sense, which I'm very interested and very involved in myself to understand these neural systems better, and of course for patients like Alzheimer's disease or patients with Parkinson's disease which can also lose memories, a key motivation in medicine for these very frequent conditions which is increasing in numbers is to of course restore memories. But restoration may also mean changing, transforming and if we're changing memories, my memory in particular, it may change who I am, what I feel like being. And so these raises not necessarily philosophical questions, but really questions for all of us, right? This, this changes potentially who we are, and this is one of the key points why neural rights is special, maybe to human rights related to cancer research in medicine or a new vaccine. This issue of memory in particular, as other examples like brain-computer interfaces and the sense of agency, raise these not only unprecedented ethical and legal challenges, but also changes who we are in a way if this approach is successful. And a final comment, it's not just a risk, it's also an opportunity because for those 50 million individuals living on this planet today with Alzheimer's disease, I mean, the field will have to propose something. So I think both of these, the risks and opportunities, it needs to um, develop in a parallel way and move forward in a parable, highly interactive way. Wonderful. So it raises really uh, very important questions. Uh, Jester has created a tool to identify what is happening in science labs, uh, technologies such as you mentioned that can really impact our lives, change our brains. How can this tool uh, help in the process of bridging uh, society, scientists, uh, and bringing all these mm -hmm. stakeholders uh, together yes I, I think I think at many levels the one level that I see uh, mostly is and we could not discuss it uh, today in detail is that science neuroscience and neurotechnology is not a status quo that remains stable it's changing all the time in another session today the number of papers appearing on neuroscience is just phenomenal how this has increased how is access who evaluates this and what's the significant new research that's coming in those fields we we discussed and i think Jester could also play a role of of bringing experts who help filtering and then making sure that the right kind of almost peer-reviewed information um, uh, makes it but 
of course, all information as well, makes it to these decision makers at, at these different societal and, and, and diplomacy levels. Breaking the silos, precisely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Olaf. Thank you very much for your interest.